Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. 61-year-old man suspected of committing suicide in St. Elizabeth. Police are investigating a suspected case of suicide involving a 61-year-old man in Tatchwatt District, Bull Savannah, on Friday. The deceased has been identified as Raymond Vassell, a retiree of Carver District in Southfield, St. Elizabeth. Police reports are that about 7.30 a.m., a passerby stumbled on Vassal's body hanging from a guinea tree in his sister's yard. The body was removed to the morgue for an autopsy. Vassal is the third man suspected of committing suicide in St. Elizabeth in recent weeks. On February 2nd, Garfield Dennis, a construction teacher at the B.B. Coke High School, was found hanging from the ceiling of his wood workshop in Malvern. On February 7, Mark Francis, a resident of Littis District, was found hanging from a tree in his yard. Two killed in Discovery Bay car accident. Two people were killed in a vehicular crash on the Discovery Bay main road on Thursday. They are 40-year-old laborer Karen Ferguson and 42-year-old carpenter Ryan Parry, both of Belfield District, Renaway Bay in St. Anne. Reports from the Discovery Bay police are that about 8 a.m., Ferguson and Parry were traveling westly along the roadway in a Mitsubishi Lanza motor vehicle when they allegedly overtook a line of traffic and collided with a silver Mercedes. The occupants of both vehicles were transported to the hospital, where Ferguson and Parry were pronounced dead. The others were admitted for treatment. Investigations continue. Government rejects claims that it abandoned students in the Ukraine. As the Russian war jumps continue to beat around the eastern European-based Ukraine, the Jamaican government has moved to alloy fears that it has abandoned its citizens, mainly medical students, in the country. Responding to questions at a post-cabinet media briefing on Wednesday, Robert Margon, Minister Without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister, with responsibility for information, argued that every effort had been made to assist the students who were identified. According to Margon, seven Jamaican students were scheduled to leave Ukraine on Tuesday, with two scheduled to leave on Wednesday. We can also confirm that we have tried to facilitate as much as possible the interest of students in the Ukraine, but we have also faced challenges, said Margon. While our staff and the Foreign Service have been making efforts, the reality is that we have not been able to contact all of them. We have reached out and while some have responded, some have not. The public should remember that at the last post-cabinet briefing, we mentioned that the students would be able to transit to Germany without the need of a stringent visa if they were transiting within a 24-hour period, added Margon. His comments came hours before a media release from Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Simit, in which she underscored that the government have made a special offer to assist Jamaican students seeking to return home and that ultimately no students have utilized it. On February 12, 2022, our offer of assistance was communicated to the students by our embassy in Berlin in the form of a loan for airfare to Jamaica, whereby the government would book and pay for the tickets for their return to Jamaica. Although seven students had requested assistance, ultimately they decided not to go this route, said Johnson Smith. The seven Jamaican students, who had indicated their interest in accepting an offer of support from us to purchase the tickets for their return home, decided against returning to Jamaica. We understand that while some students are making private arrangements, to travel to other countries in the region until the situation in Ukraine improves, others are still cautiously monitoring the situation. We are aware of eight students who have left thus far, with an additional five traveling from Ukraine over the course of this week, said the Johnson Summit in an update of the numbers earlier provided by Margon. She noted the cancellation of flights between Ukraine and Germany and warned that this has increased the complexity of travel should students still choose to return to Jamaica. We have shared the options available to them, for example, through Turkey and have highlighted our concern that travel may become even more challenging as events unfold and would even become impossible should Ukraine's airspace be closed entirely. Our message to them has been that they need to take immediate action if they intend to leave, declared Johnson Summit. According to Johnson Summit, the government of Jamaica remains hopeful that diplomatic efforts will yield a de-escalation of tension, but note with concern the intensification of the tension in the region. 
In the meantime, the ministry remains actively engaged with the students as well as their family members in Jamaica. It is estimated that just over 40 Jamaicans are privately pursuing territory studies in Ukraine. Police Commissioner Anthony Anderson thanked Jamaicans for choosing peace and safety and deciding that we have enough of debt, pain and mayhem. So as we intensified our efforts last year into the early part of this year, we're continuing to benefit from, from significant public support in our pursuit of guns, gunmen and gangs. And I want to use this opportunity to thank Jamaica for choosing peace and safety and deciding that we have had enough of the death, mayhem and pain caused by guns and the people who carry them and turn them on our citizens. And also to intimidate people and inflict the worst form of violence. Since the publication of the National Wanted List, a few weeks ago, some 16 persons have been arrested and charged for several violent crimes, and one was fatally shot and an AK-47 removed from them. This is a follow-on from our Wanted Wednesday campaign, which has been running since last year, and has seen 28 wanted persons arrested and charged and two fatally shot. We have been tracking a 22% increase in firearm seizures, with twice as many rifles being seized so far this year over last year. Over the last two days, two illegal guns have been seized right here in the St. Andrew North Division, although not in Stony Hill. The policing area has recorded two murders since, or the policing division, really, well, the area actually, has recorded two murders since the start of the year. One was gang related and the other was part of a growing concern that we have about violently, mentally ill persons harming people. So somebody was chopped by somebody who fits in that category last year, and they've died now. It's something that we are addressing as a police force to the extent that we can, but it's one of those things that we have to partner with others to do. So that's really the context and backdrop that I wanted to set for this. Marsha not over, labor pains. The four councillors in St. and Northeastern have adopted a wait and see posture regarding their under pressure member of parliament, MP Marsha Simit, who is being given an opportunity to redeem herself by doing a number of things, including reopening her constituency office in St. Anne's Bay. The office has been closed for three weeks since supporters of the governing Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, padlocked it in protest against what they said is their MP's poor performance. They also call for Simi to resign as both MP and chairman of the JLP constituency machinery. Councillors were also not satisfied with the MP's performance. All councillors, bar none, were concerned and the constituents also were concerned, one councillor claimed. Following the February 3rd protests, the Secretariat of the JLP era Council 3, which include St. Anne constituencies, convened meetings between Simit and the councillors. During those meetings, Simit reported a promise to do better and stated that she was preoccupied with her job as Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. Not everybody can manage both a constituency and a ministry, and that was what affected her. She gave priority to the ministry and the constituency was neglected, one councillor reported. While the constituents were not satisfied with their MP, the government was pleased with her performance in the Ministry of Finance. Note that the public sector wage negotiations that she was involved in have been sorted out. We believe she needs to focus on her constituency, and that is what she promised to do. So, the ball is in her court, added the councillor. According to the councillor, in their deliberations, they were mindful that Simit is a first-term parliamentarian, and she perhaps needed more time to cover the learning curves. One councillor noted, that their discontent was not only personal against the MP. My support stands with the people, and so I am supportive of an MP that works with and for the people, the councillor added. It's not a matter of being against a person personally, but I believe that if we are elected to serve, we should do so. 
At the meetings that were held, almost everybody rejected the MP, but they also told her, You see, you are going to change, and so, we can give you some time to see if you will, they stated. But even as they wait to see the change, some JLP supporters in the constituency are already tempted to place a strike against the MP's name, citing the continued closure of the constituency office. One counsel told reporters that the three weeks closure of the office speaks volumes about the MP. The people have a right to demonstrate if they feel something is not going right in the constituency. But what do you do as the MP do after? If I was the MP and that happened to me, the following morning my office would be open, the councillor argued. Another of the councillors underscored the importance of having the constituency office and running again. Urgently, we know that the office is a safe haven and ground for residents of the North East St. Anne, especially St. Anne's Bay Division, who use it to visit and look for their political directorate. It is not good for it to still be closed, the councillor opined. Reporters have made numerous attempts to get a response from Simit, but the number provided for her has been ringing without an answer. She was chosen by the JLP Secretariat to contest the 2020 election in St. and Northeastern after the previous MP, Shaheeni Robinson, died in 2020 following a prolonged illness. Robinson represented the seat in Parliament for 20 consecutive years after scoring an upset victory for the JLP in a 2001 by election. Simit, an attorney at law by training, is also the daughter of the late former St. and Southwestern MP, Ernie Simit, of the JLP. Police urge caution among motorists amid surging road fatalities. In light of the increase in road fatalities over the past two weeks, the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF is issuing a warning to road users to be more cautious when on the roads. Since the start of the year, the country has recorded 70 deaths from 63 road traffic collisions, citing data on the number of traffic crashes since the start of the year. The JCF's Traffic Boss Assistant Commissioner of Police, ACP Gary McKenzie, appealed for people to be mindful of the road rules, road signs and marking, and to obey the speed limit. The practice of some drivers to drive at excessive speeds, to overtake at corners, to drive fast on wet roads, and to drive motorcycles at high speed without helmets are the main reasons why we are having these fatal collisions, McKenzie explained. The JCF has been conducting high-visibility patrol and enforcing the road traffic laws in a bid to stem the undisciplined behavior being exhibited by some road users. However, we continue to have a high rate of collisions occurring, McKenzie continued, adding that the road users must pay keen attention to signs and marks as they are of paramount importance. Where signs and marks are not present, extreme caution is to be exercised in keeping close to the left of the road. Persons must also avoid distractions, such as the use of cellular phone, and drive at the safe speed, McKenzie urged. At the same time, he offered some tips for road users. Keep in your lane and do not change lanes suddenly. When turning on an intersection, always give the correct signal. Do not speed around corners and do not speed on wet or unfamiliar roads. Cut your speed when pedestrians are nearby. McKenzie went on to say, pedestrians when using the road, should walk facing oncoming vehicles. Wearing light-colored clothing at night, don't assume that the right-of-way of the pedestrian crossing walk in a single file when there is no sidewalk or walk the sidewalk is narrow and clearly indicate to motorists and motorcyclists your desire to cross the road. As the pedal cyclist, Mackenzie advised that when using the road, observe stop lights and stop signs. Do not hold on to moving vehicles do not travel in the wrong direction on one-way streets and do not tow another person on your bicycle. Ground broken for rebuilding of Stony Hill Police Station Proper infrastructure is an important element for the development of any community and on Thursday, February 24, Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson joined other government officials who broke ground for the rebuilding of the 100-year Stony Hill Police Station, one of the oldest stations in the Caribbean. During his address to Stony Hill residents and the local police, Anderson expressed his continued support of projects such as the rebuilding of the Stony Hill Police Station, which is being facilitated by the National Housing Trust. According to Anderson, this latest project was in keeping with the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF vision of having all police stations rebuilt or refurbished to provide modern, 
fit for purpose spaces for the policemen and women of the constabulary as well as the people they serve. The Commissioner of Police also took the opportunity to encourage the resident to assist the police by sharing information to make their community safe. He assured them that the High Command and its stakeholders remained resolute in curbing the pandemic of crime. We have continued our pursuit and we are capturing the gunmen, dismantling gangs and removing the guns from our streets, he said. Anderson further reported the success of the Wanted Wednesday campaign, which has seen several wanted men being captured since the start of the year. He also assured the citizens that the police continue to pursue the high standard of customer service through the International Organization of Standardization ISO 9001 as the police seek to create a better relationship with the citizens of Jamaica. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.